Today we're going to do some simple lathe operation. A job came into the shop with some parts from a General International tool. Apparently General isn't making tools anymore, so you can't get parts for these. Lucky for us, we don't have to make an entirely new part, although that would be a pretty simple part to make. All I have to do is bore this over to three quarters, just so this chisel will fit inside it. I think right now we're running at about 150,000 difference. Let's throw it in the lathe and get started. The first step is going to be to make sure, because we want it on center, that the jaws of this lathe are absolutely clean. Placement is going to be a little bit more important with this one as well, because it's got that small hole in the side of it. You see now, it would probably be fine if I put that hole in line with the jaws, but sometimes that can run into a problem, because it could squish it a little bit different in there, or it might not hold it just quite right in the center, and it'll be pushing it a little bit off to the side. I just got this boring kit, it's a cheaper boring kit off of Amazon, and it came with all these bits, and I'm actually kind of curious to use one just to see how they're going to work out in this job. Now I know it's for a milling machine, but basically the science is all kind of the same, it's a braised tool bit, I just got to make sure that I'm on center. One of the things that I'm noticing right out of the hop, is that it's a little bit too big for the size of diameter that I have to bore. You see the back part of this tool bit is going to rub on the bottom if I put it on center. I'm going to start with removing some of the metal with the rough grinding stone, but I'm not going to touch the carbide with it. I'm going to take that over to the green stone, and then I'm going to do that on that side. Now this is important, because if you use the wrong stone on carbide, it's going to fracture the carbide. Although it's going to look good while you're grinding it, once you start putting a bit of pressure on it, it's going to crumble away kind of like brittle candy, and you're going to be left with a big mess. Needless to say, you're not going to want to get it too hot, and you're definitely not going to want to stick that carbide in any water to cool it off. Once I have the geometry cleaned up a little bit, I'm going to put a little radius on it, because if you don't put the radius on there, it's going to leave a thread on the inside of the cut and give you a poor surface finish. One of the other challenges also, this has a round shank on it, so I have to be very careful I get the tool bit on the correct horizon with where I want to cut. Before I start cutting, I want to kind of get my head in there and just make sure that it's not rubbing on the back side or anything. Although I do have 150 thou to take off, it's just good practice just to make sure that it's not going to rub anywhere and you're not going to have any problems. And it's a good thing I did because I noticed my height could be adjusted just a little bit to improve it. If your height isn't quite on center, you're going to run into surface finish problems or when you take a cut, you're going to take off a little bit more than you expect because you're above the geometry. Speaking of surface finishes, this lathe is running way too fast, and I'm pretty sure a lot of the machinists are going to call me on this. And I did a couple cuts like this, and I should know better. However, at least this is a good learning opportunity for you to see what to do better. See, what's happening here is because it's going so fast, it's creating a frequency where the tool bit's bouncing on the inside of the work. This is causing it to cut, and then throw it out again, and then it jams back into it, creating your frequency of back and forth, creating the sound that you're hearing. It also ruins the surface finish. And later on in the video, you'll notice where I slow it down. It's going to sing a really happy song, and it's going to give it an amazing surface finish that the customer is going to be very happy with. What I just did there a second ago was I measured the shank, and then I measured the inside of it, and of course I zeroed it when I touched it in the shank. This gave me the difference of how much I have to cut off. Turns out I have to cut off roughly 150 cal, so I'm going to take two passes of 100, and then I'm going to go back and measure and double check. There's a few more variables that you're going to want to pay attention to when you're running a lathe to get it to the right size. Even though you have a fancy digital readout, if you get your feed and speeds incorrect, it's going to cut a little bit different. Another thing, if you get it too hot, that can expand your part, and then you're going to take all of the cuts and measure everything with what you thought was on size, and then it's going to be a little different when it cools off. Secondly, you notice that I'm blowing out all the schmoo on the inside. If you can't measure the part correctly, you're never going to get to the right size. Now what I've done here is, I brought the inside bore size to the same size as the shank of the chisel. Good thing I made that mistake. Now, obviously right. the two aren't going to fit together if they're the exact same size, because there has to be a clearance in there. So now we're about to come up on taking the final pass on the bore, and this is where everything has to be right. Everything leading up to this moment was pretty much a practice run for the final cut. Okay. The final cut, like I said, 
it's super important to have everything right. Now listen to the lathe and listen to the cut and the song that it's going to sing. This is more of a happy song that's going to give you a really, really good circle finish and a lot of happiness in the end. Running at 1050 RPM was the perfect run for this. I mean, it could be a little bit better because you could still hear it singing a little bit, but when you look at the end service finish, and we'll show you a little bit later, it's absolutely shiny and amazing, and the part fits amazingly together. This is exactly the type of fit that we were looking for. I have to apologize. I didn't show you that I put a chamfer on there just before I packaged everything up. And that was kind of key, just to round those corners just a little bit, so later on when he slides the parts together, it fits together just nicely for him. Speaking of fitting the parts together, let's slide that collet on the chisel so we don't lose it, and then get it out to the customer today. So if you just kind of happened across my channel, let me tell you a bit about the Wright Machining channel. I really, really enjoy building stuff, and I've come to really enjoy sharing building stuff with other people. Some of the videos that I shared earlier this year was making a hand wheel for a greenered arbor press. And in this video, I actually created the pattern and then casted it in the backyard. And then we took it out to the machine shop and then broached the keyway and fit it up. So you might want to click on the subscribe button so you get some of the videos that are coming out or check out the channel.